Hi, I'm Mark from Fluke Networks. Today we're going to take you through detailed operation of the Link IQ Cable Plus Network Tester. And let's start by having Eric take us through all of the different accessories and models. Hi, I'm Eric from Fluke, and today I'm going to give you a complete overview of the Link IQ Cable Plus Network Tester. First, let's take a look at what's in the base kit. We have the Link IQ itself, this handy case for easy transport, a quick reference guide, a CAT 6A patch cable, a hanging strap, remote ID number one for complete wire map testing, an RJ45 to RJ45 modular connector, a USB-C to USB type A cable, and last but not least, a charging cable, which also ends at USB-C for fast charging. In the Link IQ kit, we have the remote IDs number two through seven, as well as the Intellitone Pro 200 are all included. If you are looking at an industrial kit, we include the MS-IE adapter, which is used for industrial ethernet cabling. We also include specialized patch cables for all of the industrial connectors you may have. Now that we have an idea of what's in the kit, let's take a look at the UI of the Link IQ. Thanks, Eric. Now let's go through the settings for the Link IQ. The first settings are for the wire map part of the cable testing. You can select a shield test to determine whether or not the tester will test to see if the shield has a continuous link. You can allow a crossover cable, which means that the tester will pass a cable even if it swaps the 1, 2, and 3, 6 pairs. And then pin out. You can pick 568A or 568B, which changes the colors that are displayed on the screen when it shows the pin out. Cable settings is where you set the performance that you want the Link IQ to measure. So you can measure anything from gigabit ethernet to 10 gigabit ethernet, or just a basic wire map. It also supports two pair cables for 10 base T or 100 base TX. The NVP allows you to set the speed at which the signal propagates through the cable as a percentage of the speed of light. This makes your length measurements or distance to fault measurements more accurate. Auto increment is a real time saving feature. It automatically increments the cable ID every time you run a test. So you don't have to enter a new number every time. If you just finished cable number 11, it will automatically change the last digit to a two. So now you're testing cable 12. This is where you enable or disable the Link IQ's power over ethernet tests. Now the Link IQ can test IEEE compliant 802.3 AT, AF and BT power sourcing equipment. But that can take a little bit of time because it tests all the way to class eight. So if you don't care if your switch is outputting PoE and don't need to test it, you can turn that off and save a little bit of time. The network setting allows you to set up the Link IQ's IPv4 or v6 addresses. You can either use DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or set up an address yourself including the subnet mask, gateway, and DNS server. Here's where you can set the address of your target for your ping test. And here's where you can disable or enable the ping test as part of the switch test. Next, you can set the CDP or LLDP timeout. This is the time that the unit will wait to receive a CDP packet or an LLDP packet from the switch. Now, if your switches aren't managed, they'll never come, so the unit will just wait until the timeout's done. So this is another thing you can use to save time if you're not working with managed switches. You can also set the display brightness, whether or not the unit will shut off after a minute or two of activity, whether or not you wanna have sound, and whether or not the numbers are separated with decimal points or commas, and if the units are in feet or meters. Here's where you set the date and time. You can also choose from a variety of different languages. And finally, you can check your software version and your serial number here, and reset everything back to factory settings with that setting. Back to you, Eric. Now that we know all about the settings, let's check out the tools that are available on Link IQ. We have a tone generator. 
which uses our patented IntelliTone, as well as analog tones one through three, which you can use with the IntelliTone or with the analog ones you can use with our Pro 3000 series. We also have a port blink light. So when you're connected to a switch, it will blink the port light so you know which one you're connected to. Now that we've adjusted our settings and checked out our tools, let's get on to cable testing. Go to the home screen. And we've connected our RJ45 patch cable to the top of the tester. And from there, we're connected to a longer length of cable. Simply press auto test. The link IQ shows that we are connected to a 46 foot long length of cable, but it doesn't detect a remote ID on the end. So technically it's open. Let's go for a more complete test. We'll exit this without saving. Now, if we plug in the remote ID in the far end of the cable, and we press auto test now, and look, it passed. All the cables are complete, and the cable is capable of supporting 10G. When we look at the pairs itself, you can see that it tests to the shortest length of cable, which in this case is the orange pair and the brown pair. Now let's save this result. We can change the test ID. And we'll change the, the project name from plastics to, let's say, Fluke Park. And we can adjust who the operator is. In this case, let's put in my name. Hit OK, and the result is saved. Now let's take a look at what happens when we get a failed test. Let's hit auto test and see what happens. As you can see in this failure, we failed due to wire map issues. Cable six is not terminated at the other end properly. You can save this result so you can go and fix it later. Now that we've covered cable testing, let's look at what happens when we're plugged into a network. Thanks, Eric. Now that we've talked about cable testing, let's go into the network testing capabilities of the Link IQ. When you connect Link IQ to a switch, if it's managed, you'll see the switch name and its IP address. Touching here gives me even more information, such as the switch description, the port ID, and the VLAN number. I can also see the connected speed, in this case a gigabit, as well as all the advertised speeds being offered by that switch and their duplex settings. Touch here for the results of the ping test. You'll see the address that we targeted, the response time for each of the four pings, and how many were lost, in this case zero. You can also see my own IP address, the address of the DHCP server, and some details about the DHCP offer from that server. Finally, we can scroll down and see the PoE information here. You can see whether it's a single or dual signature PoE port. You can also see which pairs are offering the power. In this case, it's the one, two, and three, six pairs. We show the hardware class number and the wattage being offered, and then the voltage load under test. If this drops too low, that indicates you may have a problem with your switch or your cabling might be bad. Now we can save these results and we're good to go. Thanks for watching this overview of the Link IQ Cable Plus Network Tester. If you'd like to see more, just follow the link below to our virtual demo.